O Lord, there's none like thee, neither is there any God beside thee, according to all that we've heard with our ears. And what one nation in the earth is like thy people Israel, whom God went to redeem to be his own people, to make thee a name of greatness and terribleness by driving out nations from before thy people, whom thou hast redeemed out of Egypt. For thy people Israel didst thou make thine own people forever, and thou, Lord, becamest their God. Therefore now, Lord, let the thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house be established forever, and do as thou hast said. Now here David says, your people are Israel. You made Israel your people forever. Now the Zionists will jump on this. But guess what? They're not all Israel, which are of Israel. Of course Israel will always be the people of God. Except for the fact that that fake nation over in the Middle East is not Israel. Like, what if, what if we just change the name of Tempe to Israel? Would that make it Israel? Say, well, but it's that land. It's all about the land. Really? It's just all about dirt and rocks and trees and plants? No, it's the people. Israel was a person. That's a person's name. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Jacob's name was changed to Israel. That's a person's name. The children of Israel, okay, is who we're talking about. Well, who are the children of Israel? Who are the children of Israel? I mean, today in 2018, who are the children of Israel? You know who the children of Israel are? You know who the children of Abraham are? It's the people who have the faith of Abraham. It's people who have the faith of Israel. It's not a, it's not a physical descendant. That's why the Bible said, avoid genealogies. I mean, if, look, if being a physical descendant of Israel made you the people of God, then let's bust out the genealogies and figure it out. Let's trace it back. He said, avoid it. Stay away from it. The last genealogy we need is the genealogy of Jesus. That's the last genealogy you'll find in the Bible. The genealogy of Jesus. Because you know what? Here's how my genealogy goes. It's the genealogy of Jesus, and then Jesus begat Stephen Anderson. That's the only genealogy I need. So I'm in the line. I'm descended from all the right people. Abraham, David, everybody. Because Christ had all those wonderful genealogies in Matthew chapter 1 and Luke chapter 3. And I'm tapped into that by being begotten of him. I'm his son. So therefore, I share that same genealogy. No, no, you know, you got to be... These, what, these bunch of white people? It's funny how they left Israel brown and came back white. These white Europeans, these freckled, red-haired, blonde-haired, blue-eyed people from Poland and Germany and Hungary. Oh, they're the chosen. No, Jesus didn't recognize them in John 8. He said, Abraham's not your father. We be Abraham's seed. He said, you're of your father the devil. You're not Abraham's children. He said, if you were the children of Abraham, you would do the works of Abraham. You know what? The real son, I, I mean, think about this. God forbid that I would ever have a son that would grow up and just do everything wrong and wicked and, and not believe in Christ. You know, God forbid, that'd be the worst thing as a parent, you know, to, to have a, a child like that that would go out and do all those horrible things, right? But you know what? If some child went out and just hated Christ, that would, I, I wouldn't recognize that as my son. I'd say, you know what? That's not my son. Some Christ hater, somebody who hates the Lord Jesus, I would say, that's not my son. You know what? And I would look at someone who loves Christ and say, that's my son. <laughs> you know what I mean? Somebody that I'd won to Christ, that loves Christ, that serves Christ, and say, that's my son. Isn't that what Jesus said? Jesus said, who's my mother? Who are my brethren? Whoever does the will of God, the same as my mother and sister and brother. You know, so to sit there and say, oh, these are the sons of Abraham. Really? That's funny because they hate Jesus Christ. They hate the one who Abraham prayed to. They hate the one that Isaac and Jacob worship. They hate the, the one who Israel worshiped. How can they be his sons? They're not his sons. You know whose sons they are? They're the devil's children. The Pharisees were the sons of the devil, and today's Judaism is the religion of the Pharisees, a Christ-killing, Christ-rejecting religion is what it is. Call it what it is. It's what Judaism is. It's a false religion that has been hating and rejecting Christ now for 2,000 years. Spitting on the ground when they hear his name. 
literal disgust for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Oh, they're the chosen people. We ran into one of the chosen ones out soul winning today. It's funny how she didn't even want to hear Romans 3.23. She wouldn't even listen to one verse. She was just quick to get us out of there. Just no interest. And 99% of the time, if you knock on the door of a Jew, that's their reaction when you try to give them the gospel. Now, I've won a couple to the Lord in the last 20 years of soul winning. It's very rare that they will get saved. So when he says, Israel is going to be my people forever, amen. Amen. And guess what? I'm Israel. You're Israel. Because the Bible says we're the circumcision, which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. The Bible says if you're Abraham's seed, then, or he said, I'm sorry, if you're in Christ, then you're Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. He said, they're not all Israel, which are of Israel. They, which are the children of the flesh, these are not the children of God, but the children of the promise are counted for the seed. And he compares it to Isaac and Ishmael. And he says, we, to the Gentiles that are saved and in Christ, he says, we, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. That's what he told the Romans in the epistle to the Romans. He said, we, as Isaac was, are the children of promise. He said, you know, the Jews are, they're Ishmael and Hagar. Cast them out. They're the bondwoman and her son. Cast them out. So, of course, the Judaizers, dispensationalists, and Zionists love to pull an Old Testament verse like this out of context and try to pin it on the Zionist state over in Israel. But you know what? That is misapplying Scripture and failing to rightly divide because the, they'll never find anything in the New Testament. They'll never find anything in the New Testament that people who reject Jesus are God's people. That doctrine is completely foreign to the New Testament. It's completely stupid in light of the New Testament when every page is telling you, hey, it's all about Jesus. If you got Jesus, you got everything. If you don't have Jesus, you have nothing. If you're in Christ, you're, you're in. You have Jesus, you got the Father also. You don't have Jesus, you don't have the Father. You're damned, you're doomed, you're anathema, you're separated from God, you're an enemy of Christ, you're an enemy of God the Father, you're an enmity with God, you're a child of disobedience, you're a child of wrath, you're under the power of the prince of darkness. I mean, the Bible just tells you over and over again, if you don't have Jesus, you're nobody. And if you have Jesus, you're a joint heir, you're a son of God, you have all these blessings. I mean, how can you read the New Testament and not see it? But the, the Jews are like Esau. Isn't there a little blessing left for us also, my father? No, I've already blessed the Christians with all the blessings. The Christians have already come and taken away all your blessing. There's nothing left for you. Well, Esau still had a little blessing left of at least serving Jacob, you know, right? Playing second fiddle for Jacob. The Jews don't even have that. Of course, the Jews are too prideful and arrogant to ever play second fiddle for anyone since they think that they're God and they think that they're their own Messiah is what they actually believe in their teachings. They, they don't accept Jesus as the Messiah. Well, they're still waiting for the Messiah. They think they are the Messiah. I, I, I can't even count how many times I've seen them say, w we collectively are going to be our own Messiah, they said. That's why they're going to have a little trouble with the Antichrist. Because eventually they're going to be like, all right, thanks, we'll take over from here. And he's going to be like, no, I'm going to kill all you guys now. <laughs> and you know, God's going to be like, yeah, this is all part of my plan. Yeah. To punish these wicked people. I mean, God's got some wrath coming in the book of Revelation. That's a whole nother sermon. That's a whole series of sermons.